Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Yami, your Latina next door, and today I'm sharing my top 20 DIYs of 2020. I love sharing high-end home decor inspiration and DIYs on a budget. I am sharing a variety of DIYs that I had created throughout this year. Some of them were my favorite, some of them were your favorite, there are a variety of DIYs here, some more complex than others, and all ranging in different mediums. And if this is your first time watching, I would love for you to become part of the familia by subscribing. Also, if you like any one of these DIYs, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. So with that being said, let's get started. DIY number one. So for my first DIY, I'm going to use this teapot. I got it on clearance at Hobby Lobby for only $2.19. I love the shape, but I was not really liking the color. So I immediately knew that I was going to change it and I was going to paint it white. I gave it several coats of spray paint. After the paint had dried, I put washi tape all around the little teapot. I placed it about two thirds of the way down. Next, I took some brown paint that I had. I've had this for quite some time, as you can see, and I started painting the bottom portion of the little teapot. I made over some vases and I created some Pottery Barn dupes using this technique a while back. After two coats, I removed the tape. And then I had this stencil that I got from Dollar Tree. And it's a nice flexible stencil so it'll work around this little teapot. So I decided to go ahead and use the little asterisk that was among these letters because it kind of reminded me of a little flower. I marked it off and then using some navy blue acrylic paint began to stencil the little asterisk all around. I spaced them out as evenly as possible and then I did three rows. I did the top one first and then I worked my way down alternating the positions of the little asterisk as I went down. And that was it. For now, I placed some faux herbs from the Hearth and Hand line, but I hope to be able to actually plant a real plant in there very soon. DIY number two. The second DIY was a look for less creation. And this was a mirror that I had found on Pure One's website when they were going out of business, but it was still out of my price range. So I decided to go ahead and make one of my own instead. So for this, you will need a round board. I got this at Home Depot and I got the larger two foot one for $10. You'll also need a round mirror. And I bought this one at Michael's. It's 14 inches in diameter. They carry it all the time. And I used my coupon to get it even cheaper. And finally, you'll need these wooden beads that are cut in half, and I actually purchased these on Amazon, and I'll go ahead and link to everything that I used in the description box below. I wanted to give this a nice, clean, coastal look with a weathered feel, and I just used what I had on hand. I used my home decor folk art wax, some gray chalk paint, and some acrylic, and of course, my antiquing wax in order to mix it up and create a stain for my base. So the first thing I did was pour my clear wax and then begin blending the other colors until I got the shade that I wanted. The best thing about this is, is that you can adjust the shade to be as light or as dark as you wish, use any hue you want, or even use an actual stain. Now once I like the color that I created, I began adding it to the clear wax. Now I will admit 
this took me a couple of tries because at first I thought that this would be enough but as you can see here it was just way too light and it wasn't doing much at all and then when I would wipe off the excess it looked like there was practically any stain at all so I had to go back and add a little bit more wax and darken up the color and start adding it again this time it was actually closer to what I had envisioned in my head this time I applied a generous coat and then I let it sit so that I could soak up the stain a little bit more before I wiped it down. I made sure to cover all of the edges of the round board as well. I set that aside and then I began working on the wooden beads. I applied the same stain and used a smaller brush this time. I will say this process was a little messy. For these, however, I wanted to give them a little bit more dimension. So after these dried, I kind of added a little bit more antiquing wax throughout them to give them more of a wood grain finish since they looked a little bit solid after I added the stain to them since they were a different wood than the board. And it worked out, it actually gave it a little bit more dimension. Now these don't have to be perfect by any means because later on I am going to dry brush them white. So you'll see that in a bit. So after the large board has dried, you see me here wiping off some excess wax. This wax tends to beat up and get a little grainy on the top. So I do like to remove all that before I apply any second coats. And here I am adding that same shade of brown stain all over what I had previously done. Now because I'd already applied a layer of wax, it was looking a little bit more solid than I wanted to. So while it was still wet, I kind of ran my rag across it so that it would get a little bit more streaky and not as, you know, just one color. So after that was dry, it was time to apply the mirror to the center and I love using my fabric um, measuring tape for all of my DIY projects because it's just so handy to just pull out. I made sure it was centered and I drew a circle all around it just so I could make sure to reapply it where it went. Plus you're not gonna be able to see that line later on once the mirror is back on. I flipped the mirror over and I removed as much as I could of the little felt pads in the back and then I applied E6000 generously all over. And as you can see, it's probably time for me to buy a new tube. I flipped it around and made sure that it was in that circle that I had drew earlier. And next it was time to apply the little wooden beads. Now for this one, my littlest wanted to help and wanted to apply the beads with me. So you'll see her little hand adding these beads one by one. Now ideally you do want these to fully dry before going on to the next step which is dry brushing that white because if not you do run the risk of them shifting when you paint them. Now I use my home decor white chalk paint in white Adirondack and I just use a chip brush in order to dry brush this across the board. Now you can go as heavy or as light as you want. I fiddled around quite a bit trying to figure out how much I wanted. Um, I did, however, try to follow the wood grain to keep it nice and, you know, steady like that. But other than that, I just randomly, you know, made heavier spots and lighter spots depending how I wanted it to look. And in some areas like this, I would wipe some down and kind of blend it in a little bit more. So it actually looked like it was more in the wood instead of just right on top. And in the original piece, I noticed that it had a lot of white kind of accumulated around all of the little beads to make it look like they had, I guess, aged and crested over time. So I decided I wanted to do that too. And I wanted to fill in all those little nooks with more white. So it actually looks like, you know, it was there for a long time. So I added a little bit of watered down white chalk paint with a small little artist brush. And then I just wiped it away with a dry brush and then any excess I would remove with a rag. Mm -hmm. 
I also dry brush the white chalk paint onto the edges of the round board and because it's actually rougher than the smooth top, the dry brushing looked really great on the edges. Then I went back and did the same exact thing and added a little bit of watered down white chalk paint on the inside of all of the beads. That way it looked nice and cohesive throughout the entire outside of the mirror. Then I just took some glass cleaner and cleaned the mirror off, making sure that all of the paint was gone. And I hope to eventually add a hanging kit on the back of this mirror so I can hang it on a wall, but for right now, um, I did not have a kit to hang it for this video, so I'm just placing it on the mantle for now. And here is what the mirror looks like all completed. I think it turned out so beautiful. DIY number three. So for this next DIY, this is probably gonna be the simplest DIY out of all of these. I had purchased this faux phone a while ago over at Ross for my previous business and I was basically using it as a prop and it was still left over and I never got rid of it because I kind of liked its bones. So I figured why not give it a makeover with some spray paint to make it look a little bit more high end and a little bit more antique. So I started off by painting it with a flat black paint. And then after that layer was done, I came back in with a satin metallic paint in an oil rub bronze color so that it can give it an antique effect. And I spray painted it with that. And after a couple of coats, this is actually how it came out. I think it completely elevated the look and it looks great on a side table or even on a bookshelf. And here's even a side-by-side -side shot of the before and after. DIY number four. So for this next DIY, we're gonna be doing a furniture transformation and I had purchased this table a while ago at Goodwill for only $13. I wanted it to have a two-tone look, so I started off by sanding off the top part of the table completely straight down to the bare wood. I gave the rest of the piece a light sanding to remove any imperfections and I began to tape it off and give it its first coat of paint. I used the color Hazy in Folk Arts Home Decor Chalk Paint. I gave everything one first full coat of paint and then I came back and gave it a second coat. Once my two coats were complete, I removed the tape and I began to distress all of the edges and corners so that I can give it a little bit more of an aged look. After I was done with the distressing, I came back with Folk Arts Home Decor Chalk Wax in the clear color and I just gave everything a nice seal. I removed the excess furniture wax and once fully cured over 24 hours, my piece was finished.
DIY number five. This next DIY was from a Dollar Tree mystery box challenge and I was using one of these burners that I was given in my box and I began to wrap it around with this nautical rope. I began wrapping the rope around from the perimeter and working my way in. That way the circular motion would stay pretty even. If I started from the center and work my way out, it actually might not look very even or I might go toward one side more than the other so I figured working from the outside in was better. I tried my best to make the seams as clean as possible and kept wrapping towards the center. Once the inside of the burner cover was fully covered with rope, I went to the outside again and added one layer right on top of the very edge. And then after that one was done, I added a second layer on the outside of that. This way I would cover up the metal rim and then I would have an additional space for rope to go underneath and cover the rest of the plate on the bottom. I wanted some handles for this tray so I decided to do something a little different and use some leather. This was actually left over from a previous project and I got a strip and I cut it in half. Using some hot glue I adhered it to either end of the tray making sure that I actually adhered those strands where there were seams that way you could not see any from the sides and this is how that project turned out. DIY number six. While browsing online, I came across this beautiful whitewash wooden barn door with glass face on Kirkland's website. I love the look, but at $75, it was out of my price range. So I decided to make my own. So I found this frame over at my local Goodwill. It was only $1.50 because they were having a 50% off green tag sale. And as you can see, this actually was $19.99 from Hobby Lobby. So this was a great score. Next, I had these poplar pieces of wood that I always have on hand. These are from Home Depot and only $1.05 a piece. You guys know I always use those. And I took them and started making markings on each end for each of the corners. This was going to be my little barn door X. Next, I took my miter saw kit and started cutting along the lines. Once I was done with one end, I would go back to the frame, make sure it fits snugly, drew my lines again, and then cut it the other side. After both ends were cut, I made sure to sand them down and then did a dry fitting. Keeping that first piece of wood in there, I came back with another piece of poplar and I traced the other two pieces that would go on the other side to complete the X. Then I removed the pieces of poplar wood and gave them two coats of white chalk paint. I did the same thing to the entire frame, making sure to also paint the frame that goes around it. After both coats were dry, I took my ruler and I made markings in order to make the faux wood slats that would go on the barn door. I marked the center and then the center of each side and then I did the same thing to the other side of the frame. Then with a piece of poster board that fit just inside the frame, I went ahead and used that as my flat edge to draw from one point to the other. All I used was a pencil and it gave me the perfect lines for it. Mm -hmm. 
next it was time to adhere the X and I just used some of the wood glue from Dollar Tree. It actually works pretty well. And then after the X was in place, I put some heavy paint little jars that I had to keep it down and flat on the surface while it dried. I had this empty jar, I don't even know where it came from, so I wanted to go ahead and use that as my vase. And we picked this little item up from Home Depot. I'm not sure what the heck it's called, but you guys know what it is. You pull it and it tightens. So I figured it was malleable enough to cut to fit around our jar. But apparently it wasn't soft enough for me to cut. Lucky enough, I have the Latino engineer who has stronger hands than I do and he cut it for me. I wanted it to wrap around the jar and of course hold it on to the little barn door. So the Latino engineer came in and began trying to fit it around the jar and making it the shape that I needed it as well as cutting the excess that I didn't need. It took him a little while to figure out the exact length that we needed to make it and how to wrap it around it. Unfortunately, my hands aren't strong enough for this because I do suffer from a carpal tunnel, but again, I'm lucky that he is here to help me with little things like this. Now, after we got the size just right, I went in with some Gorilla Glue. I didn't want it to accidentally slip and fall because I do have little kids, so I wanted to make sure that there was some kind of adhesive on it in addition to the pressure. It took me a little bit to find out exactly where I wanted the metal to sit and where it best would hold the jar up. And after I did that, then I had to figure out a way to hold it. And what I did was I found that a hair tie works in these instances and it kept it held together while the adhesive dried. I removed any excess adhesive that might have gotten on the jar from all the shifting and then I let it dry overnight. And the next day, all we needed to do was drill a couple holes in the metal and screw it right on to the X. I added some faux stems that I had lying around and the project was finally finished. DIY number seven. For this next DIY, I'm gonna be using an item from another Dollar Tree mystery box challenge, and I am using this little arrow you see here. Now with my crafting shears that I've shared with you guys before, I used it to cut down some angled cuts for some wood dowels that I will be adding on to that little arrow. And look at how that thing slices. I love this thing. If you guys wanna check it out, I'll leave a link in the description box below. So you might have guessed it, I'm making this into a little house and I am going to make a little roof for this. So after I made the cuts, I took some of my antiquing wax, I use this all the time, and I mix it with a little bit of water and all you do is apply it with a brush and wipe off the excess with a paper towel and it looks just like as if you would stain it. I'll leave this product also in the description box below if you want to check it out. We are going to be using this throughout the entire video. So while that's drying, I'm gonna take some of my home decor white chalk paint and give this one nice coat, making sure that I also get the edges. And then after that was dry, I adhered the little dowels with some hot glue. And then I took some washi tape and put it on the bottom to create a door. Then I took some apple barrel black paint and just applied one coat. So I had recently bought this sign at Dollar Tree and I'm gonna use it for this. And I also had this embroidery hoop on hand and for the sign I'm gonna use the back side. 
All right, so I'm gonna take my antiquing wax again, all watered down, and I am gonna do the same thing to this and just give it one coat. And so while that's drying, I am going to apply Mod Podge all over the large sign. I'm gonna adhere this scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby a while ago. Excuse my arm, I did not know it was in the way. And whenever I do a large sign where I'm Mod Podging it, what I like to do is take a roller to it to take out all the bubbles. And sometimes we get smudges on these things. So I picked this little eraser up in the craft section at Dollar Tree and it takes off smudges, glue, you name it, it is so good. So when that was dry, I cut off the edges. I started with the scissors and then I did a little bit finer cuts with the X-Acto knife. and I sanded off any rough or imperfect edges. Then I wiped it down and applied Mod Podge all over the top of it to seal it. Once that was dry, I took some E6000 and I adhered the embroidery hoop right on over it. I used a little bit of hot glue to keep it in place, but ultimately I did place something heavy on top of it so it could keep it down. Once that was dry, I took a little bit more E6000 and I adhered the little house onto the sign. And then I made this cute little decal that says Home Sweet Casa. Took some leftover greenery eucalyptus that I had bought previously from Walmart and I hot glued it to the top of the sign. And I also took some leftover roses that I had for my Valentine's decor and placed them in the center. Finally, I took some of those pearls that Jennifer sent me and I used the medium size for this. I strung them on some jute and I attached it to the back in order to hang it. And to hang it, I basically glue the jute string to the back of the sign and add a little bit of a popsicle stick in order to keep it in place. But then I realized that my beads were gonna slide down, so I took a little bit of the end of the popsicle stick and I adhered it to the very top so it wouldn't go down behind the sign. And that is it for this first DIY. I love the colors. I love how everything looks so good together. I love that little house. I think this is just perfect for spring. DIY number eight. This next DIY is another look for less and I am gonna try and replicate this urn that I found on Ballard Design's website. And you can take this idea from this video and use it on any kind of application that you want for any piece of decor with what I'm about to show you. And what I'm using for this DIY is this little piece that you see right here that I bought at Goodwill as well as a clear glass vase that I picked up at Goodwill as well. I made sure everything was cleaned off with some rubbing alcohol and then I took some E6000 and adhered it to the top of that little candle holder so it would hold on to the base. Because I wanted a strong hold, I made sure to let this sit overnight so it would dry completely before I did anything with it. Then I gave the silver portion one coat of brown paint. Now the vase will be covered, however, I didn't want any of that silver peeking through. Next, I had purchased this little hula skirt over at Hobby Lobby. Now you can buy these for $4.99 and I used my 40% coupon so it was even cheaper. I know that Dollar Tree sells some over the summertime, however, they're not as nice as this one and I like the colors of this a little bit better. Now what you wanna do is you wanna braid the hula skirt and I did this by using six strands divided into three groups of two to make my braids. You're gonna to wanna to make quite a few of these depending on the size of your project. And once you have all the braids you need, you are gonna snip each one individually. 
I didn't do anything with the end of the first braid that I applied on the vase. Now I left it frayed like that, but that was because I was gonna go back around and cover that end, as you will see in just a minute. And I use hot glue to adhere that braid onto that little piece that you see right there. Now I wanted to make sure that this braid stayed secure, so I did use quite a bit of glue all around. And when I got to that little first end piece, I did cut off some excess fraying from the braid, and I glued it right on top of that little part that you see right there. I'm trying to squish it down so that it's not too bulky. Now once that frayed edge of the braid is covered, I pull the braid really tight, and then I start my second row right above that first one. Then once I get to the edge of that braid, and not all of it is gonna be able to be used because not everything is the same length, um, what I do is I cut off the excess and then I apply it to the base just like that and I glue that frayed edge right down. And I don't fold it over or anything because I wanna make sure it's nice and flat so when I take my new edge of braid, it goes right on top and it's not too bulky. So this time with my new braid, as you can see here, and I'll show you in just a second, I do have that edge folded over really nice and tightly so that it goes over that other frayed edge and kind of looks like it's a continuous braid. And then I just continue to wrap it around really nice and tight. And folding over that new edge every time is really simple. I just take a little bit of hot glue and fold over the end just like that until it's completely nice and sealed. And sometimes I need a little bit more hot glue, but it will stay in place. And I repeat the process going up the vase. Now, once I get to the glass portion, I do change my application a little bit because hot glue does not really stick to glass. So I had to do a combination of glues. So when I got to the glass, what I did was I took a little bit of E6000 and put it on the glass. And then I would come back with the hot glue gun and put a small line right up against that previous braid so that the new braid could adhere to it and hold while the E6000 was drying. And I found that this actually worked really well and it gave me a really nice stiff hold and those braids are not going anywhere. And that is it for this project. Now, of course, you don't have to use a glass vase for this, but it is what I had and I like the shape of it and I absolutely love how it turned out because I can actually put real flowers in this vase. And I don't think you can tell that this was originally a hula skirt. Now, I did want to show how it looks like up against a real basket and I think it looks pretty good. DIY number nine. This next DIY is a Dollar Tree DIY and we're gonna be using this Dollar Tree tray along with these glass containers that I purchased at Dollar Tree. Now I created a fall piece with these but this can be used for any season or any occasion. So the first thing I did was take the tray outside and spray paint it with a rose gold looking copper. And this was left over from my Buffalo Check Dollar Tree tray that I did a while back. I still had this can and it had just a tiny bit left. So I decided to use that as my color scheme for this video. And I gave it several light coats until it was all depleted and it turned out beautiful. Now you can always leave the silver if that is more of your color scheme. Next, with some white spray paint that I had on hand, I gave the jars several coats of white paint. 
Now I started spray painting them from the bottom first and then when I flipped them over I added painters tape so that I can seal the opening because if I want to store anything like candies or any kind of cookies or anything they're still safe for consumption as long as no paint is inside the jar. When they were all dry I brought them back in and I removed the painters tape. Next I went to my handy dandy hula skirt, yes. I still had some left and I began wrapping around some of the raffia around the colors of these jars. It was a little tough because the ends of the raffia were a little bit shorter and they didn't want to stay on, but I managed to get it done. I knotted the ends of the raffia and then I cut the ends short and added a cute little wooden leaf from Dollar Tree. So I set the little tray down and then I placed all the three jars along the tray. And then I cut up a bush that I actually had gotten from Michaels. It's a really pretty peachy orange color and I like this color if you're not really into the vibrant oranges for fall. I think it's still a great color and yet stays pretty uh, neutral. I also added some other stems that I had from a previous year. I had three burlap trees from Dollar Tree and I also stuck them in the vases. And that was it for this DIY. I love how simple yet really chic these vases look. I love the color scheme and how neutral it is. I really like how everything came together. DIY number 10. Okay, for this next DIY, we're gonna sew some pillow covers. These will be going into the sunroom. I'll be making envelope pillow covers. I used white duck cloth, and for this, you're gonna need one panel from the front and then two for the back. And the way you do it is, is you take the length of whatever pillowcase you have, you add six and divide by two in order to get the two little envelope flaps in the back. It seems to work pretty good every time. The cushions were 16 by 16, so I cut these 16 by 16, and then the back ones were 11 by 16. But I wanted to add a little bit more to the front, so I cut out two 11 by 16 panels of this blue and white striped fabric that I had also purchased at Hobby Lobby, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with these as well. So if you're doing this for two pillows, you're gonna need two of the stripes, four of the smaller whites, and then two of the larger white squares. So the first thing you're gonna do is hem the striped pattern fabric on one side. And then you're gonna take the four smaller pieces of white fabric and you're gonna hem one side each of those as well. Next, you're gonna take the large square and you're gonna take that striped fabric and you're gonna put it on top of it, right side out. And you're gonna pin it about two thirds of the way down from the square. And you are gonna to want to sew down that hemline that you see. So after the striped fabric has been attached to the white, you're gonna want to then take one of the smaller white flaps and put it right side in on top of that striped fabric. Make sure to have everything nice and smooth so that you can go ahead and start pinning that edge. And since you have three pieces of fabric, you wanna make sure you fold it over and make sure that you are getting all of them in a straight line. Once that side is done, flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Remember, these are supposed to be facing right side in. 
Then it's time to sew both of those ends. Now that those ends are sewn, you're gonna want to do the two sides and you're gonna wanna flatten everything out, make sure everything is nice and smooth and start pinning them. Then sew both of those sides. I like to do a reverse stitch over the ends of the little envelopes because that's where you're gonna be pulling on them the most. That way they don't tear open when you're getting the pillows in and out. Then after cutting off all the bulky corners, I run all the sides through my serger. but I wanted to add a little extra. So I had these buttons that I bought from Hobby Lobby. They were only like $3.29 and you got a pack of six. And I wanted to add them over the stripe section of the pillows. So I marked them where I wanted them to go and then I sewed them on. And I basically used embroidery string as well as an embroidery needle because the holes were kind of big and using regular thread would have taken forever to fill up. And that is pretty much it. And this is how they turned out. Oh my God, I love these pillows. They were even better than I had envisioned. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. I wanna make more, but I only had six buttons. So I have to wait to go to Hobby Lobby and get more buttons so I can make a few more of these. DIY number 11. So for this next project, I am doing a Dollar Tree Valentine's DIY, but you can use these same materials in order to make anything for any type of season. All you have to do is adjust the colors and any accessories that you wanna add to it. And as you can see, I'm using this little Dollar Tree bucket along with some nautical rope and other variations of rope for this DIY. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is adhere the nautical rope onto the little bucket. And I'm gonna use hot glue for this and I'm gonna work my way around making sure that I cover every little bit of red from that bucket. Then when I get to the end of that rope, I make sure that that's very tight and secure and I keep the ropes very close together as I glue them. Then when I get to about two thirds of the way up, I am gonna cut the rope where it kind of goes up every single level and that's where I'm gonna attach the new white nautical rope. Now this nautical rope unravels quite easily, so I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue to make sure that it doesn't at the very end. And then I am gonna glue it on to the very edge of the nautical rope, and I am gonna continue going around. Then when I got to this height, I decided to stop because I wanted to address the little handles. I wanted to cover them up as well. That way you wouldn't see any red. And I ended up using this jute from Dollar Tree as well. And this is what I did. I glued one end of the jute down at the very bottom of the handle and I started wrapping it around very tightly using a little bit of hot glue to keep it in place. And now in order for this to not look messy, you wanna take your time and make sure you're wrapping the jute really close next to each other, not overlapping. The tighter and neater you do this, the better it will look. Then once both handles were done, I continued to glue the white nautical rope all the way around making sure that I covered the ends of the jute that covered the handles and hid them underneath.
And then when I got to the end, I cut the rope and I frayed the end a little bit and then I glued that on the inside of the bucket. Now the inside of the bucket is going to be covered, however I decided to go ahead and get some white chalk paint and paint the inside top portion of it. That way in case there's any little peaks or anything, you wouldn't see any red. Okay, so next I'm going to get my wood tint in the color walnut and I am going to stain this little broken dowel that was left over from a previous project and I'm going to give it one good coat. Next, I'm going to take this little softball that comes in a pack of three from Dollar Tree and I am going to drill a hole in it the size of that dowel. Next, I'm going to take these roses that I got from Dollar Tree and I already removed the stems. Now, I took the green backing off, but in order for them to stay together, you're going to have to add a little bit of hot glue throughout and in between the petals. Then I'll cut the ends off and then I'll adhere it to the little softball with some hot glue. I am going to continue this for the top portion, adding whites to the top, adding a lighter peach color to the center and a darker peach color to the bottom, giving it an ombre look. And then once the flower ball is finished, you're going to add a little bit of hot glue to the end of that dowel and insert it through that hole all the way to the end. And then I add a little bit more hot glue to secure it. Next, I'm simply adding some floral foam from Dollar Tree, trying to fill in any large gaps. Next, I use a pencil to poke a hole in the center of the foam and then I inserted the dowel. I got some floral moss from Dollar Tree and I added it throughout the entire bottom with some hot glue. I added a cute little heart from Dollar Tree as well, as well as a ribbon to the stem and it was done. I love how this basket turned out. The two tones definitely take it to another level. DIY number 12. For this project, I am doing another Ballard Designs dupe, and I am going to be recreating this floral piece that you see right here. Now, remember when I recreated that wicker vase? Well, I had another one of these little pieces that I picked up, and I thought it was the perfect size. And then this bowl from the kitchen section, and this day, red items were half off, so it was actually 39 cents instead of 79. Also, I use these cute little 3D stickers from the Crafter Square over at the Dollar Tree section, but you can find similar items at your local craft shops. So after I took off the labels, I took some rubbing alcohol and cleaned everything thoroughly. I wanted this to be a secure bond, so instead of using hot glue, I use E6000. Also, it just works better with slick surfaces, and that little bowl was pretty slick. I made sure it was centered and let it dry. So before I did anything else, I took it outside and gave it one coat of this Paint and Primer by Rust-Oleum. It's a satin finish, but it did make the surface of this a little bit more porous so that I can adhere the stickers on a little bit better. After that was completely dry, I took it inside and as you can see, it still needs more coats, but it was now time to add those little 3D round stickers. The adhesive on the stickers is actually pretty good and you pull them off the sheet in one complete line 
the adhesive is like just one long strip and it's not really that noticeable so I didn't mind and it also cuts down on time from having to glue each one of these down. It also helps keep the spacing pretty even and I decided I was going to add some of these to the top and the bottom of the base as well. I made sure to press them all firmly at the end to make sure they were nice and secure and then I took it back outside to give it several coats of white paint. Whenever I have a piece like this or a candlestick or a vase that I like to spray paint, I always start it facing down first and then when that's completely dry, I finish spray painting it right side up. So after that was completely dry, I brought it in and it was time to work on the floral portion of the arrangement. And I got these at my local Dollar Tree. Of course, you can use any kind of stems that you find anywhere. I also got this little bush with these long leaves to mimic the ones that the paper whites had. Then I just prepped them by taking off the tags and removing any parts of the bushes that I wasn't going to use. I had these two discs from Dollar Tree. They are two for a dollar, but you can also find these in craft stores. And I'm gonna use one for this. I also had some leftover Easter eggs, also from Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna use three. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the third of the bottom of these eggs with an X-Acto knife. So you kinda of wanna take off the base, like you see here. You're gonna do this to all three of the eggs. And you're going to want to take your time because you don't want to cut yourself. You're also going to cut the top portion of the egg as well. Now I find that this part of the egg is actually a little bit harder to cut with the X-Acto knife. So I use my wood burning tool instead. And do this to all three as well. If you haven't guessed already, these are going to be the bulbs that are going to be holding each of the blooms, like in the original arrangement. Next, I took some of this crinkled paper. This was from some items that I had bought at Hobby Lobby that they wrapped up with this paper so that it wouldn't break. And it was perfect for this, so I cut three pieces. I actually cut more, but you're only going to need one square per egg. So you're gonna take a little bit of hot glue and apply it to the bottom of the egg and place it right in the center of that crinkled square. Then you're gonna take more hot glue and you're gonna start adhering the piece of paper all around the entire egg. I know this looks a little bit crazy, but I promise this is going to look really good in the end. And if you add too much paper, you can always trim off the top. The now, after you trim them and get them the exact way that you want them, you are going to get some paint. I had this acrylic paint on hand and it's the color real brown. And you're just going to take the paint and start painting all of the paper around these eggs making sure that you get every little nook and cranny and make sure that none of that white comes through Now after the paint dries, you're gonna notice that it's actually gonna make the paper a little bit stiffer and sturdier, so this is good. After they're all dry, you're gonna take some hot glue and you're gonna glue it directly on that little styrofoam disc. And I arranged it the same way as the originals were arranged. Mm -hmm. 
Then I took some of my Dollar Tree Moss. This stuff lasts forever. I've been using this little bag for a while now. And I'm gonna apply it in between those little bulbs and throughout the entire disc. Now the disc is actually the exact size of the inside of that little bowl. So I'm not gonna put any on the sides of it because then it would be too tight of a fit. So when all of the moss was in place, then it was time to add the flowers. And I cut each of the stems individually from each bush. After cutting them individually, I took the hot glue, added it to the bottom tips, and then inserted them through the little bulbs and into the styrofoam disc. I used two of the white flowers for each bulb, and then I added two or three of the long leaves to each one of them as well. Then when they were all in place, I put them inside that little vase. Of course, I noticed that the bulbs were a little bit plain and I decided to add a little bit more brown mixed in with a lighter color to give them a little bit more dimension. And then I used a little brush and just kind of brushed on a little bit more color around the top as you can see. I wasn't making it perfect, just kind of trying to make it look a little bit more realistic. And then I was finally happy with it, and it was finished. I love how the floral arrangement turned out with the little faux bulbs, as well as the dimension that those little 3D stickers gave to the little base. I think it's just perfect. DIY number 13. For this next project, I am using this terracotta pot and I am actually making a spring piece. However, I am gonna show you also how you can transition this into other holidays or seasons as well. And as you can see here, I am starting off by painting it with some acrylic paint in vintage white. I set that aside to dry and I got myself some embroidery hoops. I always have these things on hand. And as you can see, I had three. So what I did was I took my antiquing wax and I gave everything one coat of it all the way around. And once I applied it, then I removed all of the excess with a dry paper towel and I let it sit out to dry. Next, I had some wooden finials lying around because that's how I roll. They were very similar to the ones that I used for my faux vintage bells. And I too gave that one coat of antiquing wax and then wiped the excess off with a paper towel. So once everything was dry, it was time to assemble and I wanted to create a sphere out of this embroidery hoop. And what I did was I used E6000 to make sure they stayed in place. I did use some E6000 as well as hot glue in order to keep the finial in place as the E6000 dried. Quick tip that I learned in order to prevent your E6000 cap from adhering onto itself and like gluing shut, add a little bit of Vaseline to the tip and it will prevent it from happening. Next I took some floral foam and cut it to fit inside of the terracotta pot. I added the sphere and pushed that little end piece of the embroidery hoops down into the foam and I also added a couple of more dowels that I cut with my cute little tool. And that way it would hold the sphere in place and wouldn't have it rolling around.
Next, I tried this different type of grass that I found at Dollar Tree. This was my first time using it, and just like the moss, it makes a hot mess. So, <laughs> um, I put it all around the bottom of the terracotta pot and filled up all of the gaps. And next I took this bag of gingham carrots that I bought at Hobby Lobby last year, but I do know that they come again this year because I've seen them there myself. And I added some toothpicks to the ends of each one and just kind of stabbed them right into the floral foam. I used four of the little carrots for this little arrangement. And then after I got them situated, it was done. This was actually my first time that I ever did any kind of theme spring decor, especially with carrots. I've never worked with them before, but I really do love how everything turned out. And here is the fall version. By simply changing out what you're displaying on the inside of the orb, you can use this for so many occasions and so many holidays and seasons. DIY number 14. This next project is also from another mystery box challenge item. And what I love about this DIY is that a lot of people would just use this as a simple tray, but I decided to change it into something completely different from what you would have expected. And I start by staining it. Next, I made a template with some poster board and I centered it in the center of the little box and I traced it out. I took a drill and then I made a hole in it. And some more. I took my saw from the mini miter kit that I have and I sawed the entire rectangle out. Now you will get a little bit of your wood splitting on you and some split ends, so make sure you sand those down if you do try this. I touched up some of the areas that splintered and also the edges of where I cut and added a new layer of antiquing wax just to kind of make everything look nice and even. And in order to prevent any further splintering or anything, I did use a little bit of wax to seal the top and make sure it had a nice finish. This home decor wax is more liquidy. You just apply it with a brush and then remove the excess with a lint-free cloth. Next, I took these little pieces of gingham fabric that I had left over from another project and used it to add on to this DIY. Now, you can use glue if you'd like, but I prefer to sew my fabric pieces whenever I'm doing projects at home, so I chose to go ahead and sew it. Now, if you've seen some of my previous sewing projects, you know I love little pleats, and so I decided to add little pleats to this as well. I could have made them a little bit more pronounced, but it's okay. Once the pleats were done, I sewed the two ends together, making sure that the final measurements align with the inside of that little tray. I had this little box of Velcro that I've had for years, and what I did was I cut it out to fit inside of the frame. I didn't need it as thick, so I cut it right down the middle, and I did this for the entire perimeter of the inside of the little box. Now the Velcro does have iron-on adhesive for fabric, but since I'm putting it inside of this little box, I went ahead and used my glue gun. Now I needed the other piece of Velcro for the fabric and I measured the entire way around it. I cut it in half to make it thinner and I didn't show this part but I did iron it on and you're supposed to iron it on on the outside of that fabric and you want to do it on the top side where the pleats are. And then you're going to want to stick the Velcros together. Do you have any idea what I am making yet? If you paid attention to the thumbnail, you probably already do. Okay, this little skirt is just too stinking cute. That little tray fits right over those little square tissue boxes. Now when you add the fabric, it gets a little tight, but you can still squeeze it in there. And I have the cutest little farmhouse tissue box cover. Like, I think it's adorable. DIY number 15. 
This next project was part of a trash to treasure challenge. And for this, I used these leftover leaves that I had plucked off some other bushes that I had created for previous DIYs, as well as some pieces of scrap poster board. Now, before I did anything with those, I got some poplar boards that I get from Home Depot. These come in three foot lengths and they're only a dollar and five cents. And I always have these on hand in case I need to make any frames or do any projects with them. So I got these cut in order to make a frame for this project. And I got some of my favorite wood tint in the color walnut and I gave them a good stain. Now I only stain the sides of the boards that you were gonna see, so I flipped them over and grabbed some large jumbo craft sticks and my glue gun. And what I did was I cut the ends of the jumbo craft sticks, added a little bit of glue to the seams, and then used the jumbo craft sticks to hold the frame together. Next, I took the poster board and put it behind the frame. That way I made sure it fit properly. Next, I took some really pretty ticking stripe ribbon that I had on hand and I cut it just so that it would go over either end of the poster board and I adhered it to the back in order to hold it in place. I set that to the side and I grabbed all of those little leaves that were left over from those Valentine's rose bushes. And I took this little piece of wire, also from Dollar Tree that I had from a previous project, and I cut it to make one solid ring. I took some hot glue and some leaves and began to wrap it all the way around. I wanted to make sure that none of the purple showed through. So once I was done with that, I started to cut all the leaves individually and I folded them in half at their crease and then began cutting smaller leaves from those larger ones. I was going more for a boxwood type shape of leaf than those large pointy floral ones. In order to speed up the process, I stacked some leaves and cut them three at a time. And then when I had enough, I started to hot glue them onto the ring and kept layering them over each other. And it was nice that I actually had more than one color of green leaf because it gave it a little bit of dimension. And I just went around until I was happy with my little mini wreath. Now once that was done, I took the same kind of ribbon that I used for the poster board and I wrapped it on the top of the wreath and I hot glued it onto the poster board as well. Now I put the frame over it just for a second just to make sure that everything laid well. I created a decal for the sign and this one actually reads Bendice Nuestro Gar, which means bless our home in Spanish. And that was it for this DIY. Of course, I did notice that when I put the poster back behind the frame, I ended up placing the word Bendice a little bit too high, but it's okay, I can always fix that later. DIY number 16. So for this next DIY, I am going to attempt to recreate this bone tray from Neiman Marcus at original $275. The bone tray looks like it's made of individual pieces and I thought it would be a great opportunity to use a little tower game that you can find at Dollar Tree for this. In order to give the same look as the original tray, I needed to paint some of these little blocks and I used some acrylic paint in vintage white. Now I will be painting these blocks in two different ways. The first way is gonna be where we paint them on the larger side as you see I'm doing here. Now you want to paint a lot of them, so this will take a little while. Just be sure to have something on that you enjoy listening to. 
And just so you know, I used six of these little games. Now, since this was my first time attempting a tray like this, I had to figure out what the best steps were gonna be in order to get this done right. So at first I started adhering them next to each other, one white, one bare, one white, one bare wood, and I used basically school glue for this. This is the way I needed to lay them down. However, there was nothing on the back, kind of giving it a little bit extra support so that it would all hold itself together. And as you can see, there were a lot of these little blocks to put together. So I had to come up with something in order to give it a little bit more stability. So I took this frame that I had actually made for another video that I posted previously, but the little cross that was on it did not survive my kids. So I decided to use it for this as the base and support. So I began to adhere the little pieces of wood with a hot glue gun in order to add it to the frame. After my first row was adhered, I went ahead and added all the pieces that I had previously glued together onto the frame. And then once I adhered those, I began adding them individually once again. I noticed that the school glue was actually working kind of like a wood glue with the little wood pieces. So what I did was I used the school glue to adhere them to each other, but the hot glue to adhere it to the tray. I continued this along the little frame and I made sure to keep the pattern going. Wood, white, wood, white. Once they were all adhered, I did give the top a light sanding in order to smooth a couple of rough edges. And then I had to go back and retouch a couple of the white ones that had lost some of their pigment. Oh my God. Then it was time to do the perimeter of the tray. Now this is where the second kind of application applies. This time you are going to paint each of the little pieces on the narrower sides as well as one of the ends. Now some of them are completely painted as you can see, but that's because I used some of the ones that I was painting for the bottom of the tray that were left over. I went ahead and used those for the perimeter. But as you can see, all you need to do are the narrower sides and one of the ends. After all of those are done and dry, then you begin to adhere them side to side. I was gluing the larger sides together and repeating the same pattern of white, wood, white, wood. Occasionally I would stand them upright against the tray to see how many more I needed to add on. After all four sides were done and before I adhered them to the tray, I went ahead and took some sandpaper and sanded all four edges since unfortunately these are not all the same size. After that was complete, it was time to adhere the sides and I used the hot glue gun for this. I tried to make sure to make the tray as tight as possible, leaving the most minimal size gaps where I could. After the sides were adhered, then it was time to create the little handles that the original tray had. Now I just used a dowel that I had on hand that was left over from a previous project. While the tray is functional, these handles are just for show. I needed a total of two larger pieces and four smaller pieces and I used my trusty mini miter saw kit that you guys know I love. 
I used hot glue to adhere the pieces together and then I took some of my brushed metal paint in the color bronze and I gave them a couple of coats. And while those were drying, I took some Mod Podge that I had on hand and gave everything one thick coat in order to seal the entire tray. I used the matte finish because that's what I had, but you can always use a glossier version. The Mod Podge also helped kind of fill some of those gaps that were between the little blocks. And then the final step was to adhere the little faux handles. I made sure to cut off any excess hot glue that might have seeped out. You guys, this little tray was such a tall order. There was just so many steps involved. And then I gave him a couple of touch-ups. And finally, here is my finished Look For Less Neiman Marcus tray. DIY number 17. So for this project, I have this toaster oven on my countertop, which I use ever so often, and I can't really remove it because it's so big. However, I kind of want to cover it up, and I've had this idea of creating an appliance cover for it. I had some white scrap denim fabric, and the first thing I did was drape it right over the toaster oven. It was a square piece, and I made sure that all of the sides were draped along the bottom of it evenly. Next, I took some sewing pins and started pinching off all four corners, the same way I did with my farmhouse tablecloth. I wanted a comfortable fit so I didn't make this too tight. This is what they should look like. They almost remind me of Yoda ears. Then it was off to the sewing machine to sew those areas I had pinned down with those sewing pins. Then after I did all four of them, before cutting that excess fabric off, I made sure that it fit just right. Then I snipped off those Yoda ears. Then after that I made sure that all of the fabric was even all the way around. Now for the next part, I wanted to use this really pretty gray and white stripe fabric. I measured off three inches and cut two strips down the entire piece. I want this for the bottom of the appliance cover. I sewed the two ends of the two pieces together to create one large piece. And then I folded it over twice to create a hem down one side of the striped piece. Then I took my sewing pins and started creating pleats along this little striped piece of fabric. I love the coastal feel that pleats give to a piece, but I also kept it pretty relaxed because I didn't measure them precisely. Then I sewed the pleats put. After that, I took the appliance cover and turned it right side out and then faced the right side of the pleats onto the right side 
of the appliance cover and then begin pinning both raw edges of the fabrics together. Then I sewed the pleated fabric onto the appliance cover. I went all the way around. I stopped just before the ends and I sewed the two ends together, cut off the excess, and then sewed the pleated part remaining onto the remainder of the appliance cover. After the pleats were attached, I flipped the fabric over and then I sewed down on the white fabric so that it didn't bubble over and kept the fabric nice and smooth. Finally, I took it to my serger and I serged the edges of where I removed those Yoda ears. I should have done this in the beginning, but I'm glad I was able to catch it. I ironed it out and then it was finally time to put it on my toaster oven. And I just love how it turned out. cover softens those harsh lines and I don't have to look at it whenever I'm not using it. DIY number 18. So for this DIY, we're going to use this little plate. It's like a candle holder from Dollar Tree. And we're also going to use that little candle that you see right there. I'm not really a fan of Dollar Tree candles. But I did like that little container and that's what I'm going to use. The first thing I did was put the candle in a hot pot of water, have it melt, and then pour it out and clean the container. Next I made sure both surfaces were clean and I used a little bit of rubbing alcohol with a cotton pad. Doing this makes sure that there is nothing that would prevent the two surfaces from adhering together. I use E6000 to adhere the bottom of the candle holder to the little plate. Next, I took some gray chalk paint that I had on hand and with this bouncer added that chalk paint throughout the entire container. I did the top, underneath the plate, and on the little candle holder on the bottom. So what I'll be doing with this is giving it a faux galvanized look and I have a complete tutorial on what I use and how you too can create this look on any surface. I'll go ahead and make sure to link in the description box below that way you guys can check it out after this video. Once that was dry I used some of my brush metal in the dark gray and spounced all over the surface as well. Next, I took the brush metal paint in the brushed silver and repeated the process. Oh my God. Now, because this was a small surface, I wanted to try another technique and use little Q-tips dipped in paint to give it a little bit more texture. And then after I would apply the paint with the Q-tips, I would spounce over them and it actually came out pretty cute, I think. And then finally, I add my antiquing wax to the edges, and I am so sorry. Apparently, I use my middle finger to apply the paint all the time, and I forget that I have to film. It's just the finger that works best for this. After this, you can spray on some polyacrylic to protect it, and you're done. D 
DIY number 19. Now for this next DIY, I wanted to create a huge fall sign. And it goes to show you sometimes, you know what, if you really want something large, it's okay. You can definitely attempt it. And that's what I did because I had this particle board left over from a previous project that my husband had cut down to the size that I wanted, as well as some of these furring strips that are so inexpensive. And you can pick these up at your local hardware store. Now I decided I wanted a pumpkin patch sign and I was determined to get my very own. So I cut these down to fit the frame of the exterior of this board and I sanded them down and began to stain them. My goal was to paint the board with white chalk paint, but before I did that, I went ahead and spray painted it with some leftover spray paint in order to prevent any bleed through. After everything was dry, I went ahead and nailed the frame together. I couldn't find my wood glue dispenser, so I just went ahead and used some Gorilla Glue. And then I laid the board on the back of the frame and then nailed it together. I've always wanted a pumpkin patch sign and I found these pumpkins at Dollar Tree and I thought they would be perfect. The first one I painted with Nantucket Blue, which is my signature color for this fall. The second pumpkin was painted in hazy and that paint was left over from my laundry room cabinet. And the third one was French linen. I wanted to add a little bit more dimension to these pumpkins, so I took a little bit of the original color and added a little bit of white, and then began brushing dimension by adding highlights and just adding a little bit of paint along the borders. I don't know about you guys, but I kind of like seeing time lapses of people painting. I found it really relaxing, actually. <laughs> Then I took some more raffia from that hula skirt that keeps on giving and wrapped the stems of the pumpkins in order to hide the little holes. I knew I wanted to bunch them up in the center and I measured them making sure everything was nice and even and then added one pumpkin to the center top. I used a combination of E6000 and hot glue in order to secure them and then I pressed down to make sure that they did not come apart. I measured where I wanted the pumpkins to go and then very carefully with hot glue and a little bit of E6000, I pressed them down on the whiteboard, making sure they did not move. Then I created my very own pumpkin patch design on my Cricut. So I created my custom design and I weeded everything out and then applied it to the large sign. And that was it for this sign and measuring at 27 by 39 inches. It is my largest sign yet and my favorite. And finally, DIY number 20. For this very last one, I am including one of my Christmas DIYs because this DIY right here sold the most decals from my shop out of the entire year. Now, the first thing you wanna do is remove the backing and I like to actually add paper or cardstock or even poster board sometimes instead of actually painting a piece. Now, if you can see here, I actually use one of those clothes gift boxes that you get around the holidays and I just thought, why not? I had some lying around and I might as well give it a nice use. Then after that was done, I took a glue stick and I just basically glued the paper on to the back of the little sign.
Next, I took some Dollar Tree bells and I grabbed one of them as well as some red and white gingham ribbon that I picked up at Dollar Tree as well. And I just fed the little ribbon through the hole at the top of the bell. I wanted the bell to hang a little bit higher than the middle of the sign and I measured and cut accordingly. I wrapped a ribbon over the top and hot glued it to the back. Then I took some wood glue from Dollar Tree as well and I used it to add the backing back onto the frame. I placed it onto the back of the frame, I added the little hanging hook, and I even hot glued a couple of the edges to hold it down while the wood glue dried. I also reinforced it with a little bit of tape on the back just to make sure it stayed secure. Then I flipped it over and added another piece of ribbon above the bell and I tied it into a bow. I decided to create a decal for this because my kids really love the Polar Express and I thought this would be something really fun for us to have around to just always remind them to believe. And that was it for this DIY. always thank you so much for watching let me know in the comments below which one of these 20 diys was your absolute favorite now i am excited for 2021 and 2020 was a year of experimentation for me trying to figure out exactly what it was that i wanted to do for my channel but now i have a pretty good idea of what i'm going to be bringing to you all in 2021 first of all it's going to be a more consistent schedule I want to make sure I post every single week. But in order for me to give you guys the kind of quality content that I want to give you all, I'm going to be paring it down to one video per week. Every single Wednesday, you will be receiving a video from me. Now, these are all going to be a variety of videos with different types of projects. So I really hope you are as excited as I am for the new year and what it has to bring because I have a lot of amazing ideas that I want to share with you all and I hope you will enjoy it. So let me know in the comments below if you're excited. I cannot wait for 2021. I know it's going to be a lot of wonderful things to come and I will see you back here in the next video. Until then. Adiós.